Hi, my name is Michelle and I am representing Group 1. Today, we are going to show you how to genetically engineer a yeast cell. Genetic engineering is the altering of an organism's DNA sequence in order to produce changes in its phenotype. In our experiment, we disrupted the SDH4 gene in a yeast cell. All of our progress can be seen on nomoresdh4.wordpress.com. First, we need to identify the gene of interest that we will be silencing. Our group picked SDH4. Then we need to find the genetic sequence of the gene. That would be the A's, T's, G's, and C's. And then we need to find the forward and reverse primers of that gene that will help with um, DNA replication act as a base for that. After we have our primers, we run a PCR, a polymerase chain reaction. A PCR is an amplification of our primers and homology of the antibiotic resistant gene strand. The PCR consists of, template of our template strand, which has the antibiotic resistance, the forward and reverse primer, the DNA polymerase, which is the enzyme that will unwind the double strand, and nuclease free water. During the PCR, the double strand will unwind with the polymerase and be copied with primers as a base to create multiple copies of the strand. Once we have our PCR product, we have to run a gel electrophoresis to see if it worked. The gel consists of an agarose solution that, when solidified, creates a matrix for the small DNA particles to get caught in and tiny wells to insert the samples. The machine has two electrodes on each side, one negative and one positive, which will run a current through the sample and the DNA in the sample will be attracted to the positive side. This allows the DNA to move and separate to observe if the different reactions took place. In our case, this PCR sample was to copy a specific template. Loading the gel consists of mixing the sample with a small amount of loading dye to make the DNA visible and inserting it into the well along with a control, which is called a ladder. The ladder is a mix of DNA pieces of different sizes that will create markers to record the size of our sample strand. When we run the gel, we must record the size of our band and make sure that it's equal to the size of the strand we are copying. If everything went correctly, then we will go on to transforming our bacteria. We centrifuge our yeast cells to form a pellet at the bottom. Then it goes to the process of washing the pellet to remove feces, enzymes, proteins, and other impurities known as the supernatant. The lithium acetate helps with making the membrane permeable and denaturing the DNA for transformation. The purpose of the PED <coughs> is to help soften the membrane of the yeast cell DNA and to help it bind with the plasma DNA we're using for the transformation. The salmon sperm is to prevent the yeast cell wall from binding to the plasma DNA, so instead it will bind to the salmon sperm DNA. Also, yeast cells contain many nucleases, so instead of it degrading the plasma DNA, it will degrade the salmon sperm, therefore decreasing the chance of plasma DNA degradation. The heat shock is going to allow the cell pores to open up and be able to intake the surrounding DNA and begin internalization of the plasma DNA. And the DMSO just helps the efficiency for very GC-rich DNA sequences, and it acts as a buffer. Now we can finally grow our transformed yeast in auger plates against wild-type yeast and no changes in growth rate. And that's how you genetically engineer yeast. Check us out at nomoresdh4.wordpress.com.